First question is from Fit as Trucker. Barbell rows, supinated, pronated, dumbbell, or penlay? Which one is better for building the back? Uh, all the above. Yeah, they all are. They're all good. Right. All right. Let's break them down so that we can kind of tell, talk about like the the I guess the differences between them. Right. So let's start with the supinated barbell row. So that's just where the hands are facing up. This is what supinated means. Now the difference between this and a traditional barbell row overhand is that you're going to get a little bit more bicep involvement. And that rotating of the hands brings the elbows in closer to the body. So I noticed when I go supinated, I feel I can get more of a squeeze in my lats than when I use a bit, you know, when I use the overhand grip. Um, dumbbell, I get a little bit more mid back with that because of the rotation at the top, especially when it's one arm at a time. Penlay is more of a power move, and I don't typically teach that to anyone unless they're strong and stable in all of the other, you know, traditional rows. Like I never had my like everyday average clients do a pen lay row unless they were really consistent with me uh, for a while. So that's kind of the, the, the breakdown of them, I taught, but they're all good. I taught pen lay rows pretty early to a client. I mean, I think a bent over row is, I mean, it's not the easiest exercise to teach somebody and it does take some skill. So it wouldn't be, I would never start someone on a pen lay. I'd but, go dumbbell first, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, you would go through, but I mean, you once you understand how to do a bent over row pretty well and you can keep your, your if you can keep your back in a you know neutral spine, and and you can if you can load a regular row and keep good form, then you could probably teach a penlay row, which you I love. Get the stabilize and brace and really that good technique really down. But yeah, yeah. yeah, really really good. Did you teach it? Would you teach it? Yeah. I would. I did. Um, yeah, I'd take a bit. I would teach it uh, yeah. eventually, um, and um, but not until they have a good prerequisite strength yeah. and stability. Well, yeah, just, but don't you just don't... because of that fact is it's now we're moving it fast. Anything time we're moving it fast, like as long as you have the stabilization and in, in the proper uh, mechanics involved, like I think that's the next level to progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the way that I like to do barbell, if I had to pick one, because I do them all, is a pronated, which is overhand grip, and I don't go you know, flat to the floor, which believe it or not, a traditional barbell row, you're supposed to be, you know, horizontal to the floor. So your back is literally flat. That's a traditional row. I like to do it where my upper body's more at a 45 degree yeah. angle. And this mm -hmm. is the way that like Dorian Yates used to barbell row back in the nineties. And he, he made the exercise real popular because everybody loved how big his back was or whatever. I feel it more that way. Now, when I bend all the way over, yeah. obviously can't use as much weight. I feel a little bit more in the upper back and less of the lats. So I'll do that 45 degree angle one. And that's usually how I'll do my rows. Yeah. I've noticed version. when you row, I row more almost all the way yeah. over. Yeah. I just, I feel like I get a lot of lower back involved in there because the erector spinae has sure. to stabilize in that position. And so I feel like it, I feel like a better overall back workout the further I'm bent over, but you're right. You can't row very much, you know, no, yeah. but that's where the pen leg comes in. Like if you mm -hmm. can do a pretty good, you know, I don't know, 225, let's say of a bent over row all the way over, then you could shoot shooting up 275 plus with the pen lay. If you can right. hold that position that, that whole time. So I kind of get both that way. Yeah. Or if your lower back is, uh, you know, feeling it quite a bit and, and is a bit fried, I like to lean over the bench and get that kind of stabilized support. So that way I can lift a bit heavier too. If it's been taxing, like I did deadlifts, you know, previous to that. But yeah, I think they're all valid. Well, and this is just a great way of just, this is how you would, they all belong in your arsenal, I think. And I think you can just, uh, maybe except for Penlay, right? Because it's an explosive movement. Yeah. That's the only one that, you know, you bring up the point that you should have pretty good mechanics with your other other row exercises before you even consider doing Penlay. Mm -hmm. But if you have really good row form, uh, then doing this explosive movement, I think is, yeah. is totally fine if for If you do a row... Like a good row, barbell row, I'd say probably one of the better ones, or dumbbell row, and a pull up, you're hitting almost everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the pull up, chin up, or pull down, I, I prefer the chin up. That's really lat heavy. When you're doing the row, you're getting more of that mid back than you would with a pull up. And I think you develop a really nice balanced back when you, and of course, you throw deadlifts in, and you're pretty much covered uh, with the whole deal. Very but I, I remember specifically, there was a guy that worked out at, uh, golds years ago. This is a golds I used to go to. And he was like a pull-up machine. That's actually all he did was a, a million and one different variations of pull-ups. And he had these very well-developed lats, but very weak mid-back and upper mm. back development. And you could tell mm -hmm. all he did were pull-ups. So there's in order to develop balance, especially in such a large musculature, because we say the back, it's you know, you know, the back consists of a lot of muscles. Yeah. We pretend like it's one muscle. There's so many muscles. 
you want to do rows, you want to do pull downs, you want scapular retraction, you want to do some kind of scapular elevation. You want to do all this stuff to develop all the different you know, muscles of that, of that area. Well, and to answer the question, which is which one is better for building the back it's, and I think you guys would agree. It's the one that you're doing the least out of these, right? Mm -hmm. So if get good at one of them that you suck at. Yeah. Sure. So w the one that you never do is going to end up developing the back the most because the other ones, your body is somewhat adapted to doing that. So I think they all belong in the rotation and the best one that you should probably be doing right now is the one that you either never do or rarely do. You like the information in this clip, you guys are going to love the information in this full episode. Make sure you subscribe and check it out.